The county of Qinshan in Jiangsu Province, China, once held the reputation as one of the most concentrated areas of Taiwanese investment in mainland China, earning it the nickname Little Taipei in recent years. Fueled by its robust manufacturing sector, Qinshan has maintained its position as the strongest economic powerhouse at the county level in China, even acquiring a reputation as a miniature world factory. The Foxconn campus in the northern part of the county, a significant contract manufacturer for Apple, has been operational for 30 years, attracting tens of thousands of young workers to engage in the assembly lines producing Apple products such as iPhones and laptops. Nonetheless, since the onset of this year, there has been a surge in speculation surrounding not only Foxconn but also other Taiwanese firms pulling out their operations. Instigating significant worry amongst the local population of about two million residents, according to a report by People's Daily, a state media outlet, the influx of Taiwanese investment has propelled Qinshan's prosperity for the past 17 years, making it the wealthiest town in China. Taiwanese investments and businesses have contributed to 30 percent of the local GDP. 50% of industrial production, 60% of foreign capital, and 70% of imports and exports. But now, with the accelerated withdrawal of Taiwanese businesses, job opportunities in the region have significantly decreased, marking the end of Qinshan's golden era. Some residents even lament Qinshan is fast becoming a ghost town. According to a local renovation worker, he believes that within three years, Kunshan will practically be a ghost town. He mentioned that in the market area near where his son lives, only two stores are still operational while the rest have gone out of business. An increasing number of people are leaving Kunshan these days. Now, I'm taking you to the busiest and most vibrant street in Kunshan, the Renmin Road, Zhongyang Bridge, and the Kunshan department store area. This pedestrian street used to be packed with crowds, a literal sea of people. But now, even during the golden hours of Sunday afternoon, around 2 p.m., it's eerily quiet with sparse pedestrian traffic and fewer cars on the road. It's really depressing to see. Shops that were once in high demand are now displaying for transfer signs. It's hard to believe how desolate the place has become. This downturn is probably close. Linked to factory layoffs and businesses pulling out of Kunshan, the decline of Kunshan is evident in recent data. According to information released by the Kunshan Municipal Government, from 1990 to the end of December 2022, a total of 5,796 Taiwanese investment projects were approved in Kunshan, with a cumulative investment of 69.2 billion U.S. dollars. And as of the end of March this year, a total of 5,832 Taiwanese investment projects were approved, with a cumulative investment amounting to 69.4 billion U.S. dollars. These figures reveal that in the first quarter of this year, 36 new Taiwanese investment projects were approved in Kunshan, an increased investment of 114 million U.S. dollars. A report by Com News states that the number of new Taiwanese investment projects approved in Kunshan over the past three years amounted to 600, averaging 50 per quarter. Therefore, the number of new projects in the first quarter of 2023 has decreased by 28 percent compared to the quarterly average of the past three years. The decline in the growth rate of Taiwanese investment value of 114 million U.S. dollars this quarter is even more severe, plummeting by 80 percent compared to the average quarterly increase of 581 million U.S. dollars in 2021 and 22. The impact of the withdrawal of Taiwanese businesses on the economy is reflected in Suzhou's economic data for the first quarter. Official data released on April 30th showed that Suzhou's GDP increased by only 1.9 percent year-on-year in the first quarter, with the secondary industry representing industrial production shrinking by 0.7 percent. Notably, the value added of industries above designated size in Suzhou city decreased by 2.7 percent year-on-year. In the GDP rankings for the first quarter, Suzhou fell from sixth place nationally to the seventh, with a year-on-year -year growth rate that was the second lowest among the top ten cities. 
According to a report by the South China Morning Post, the exodus of Taiwanese businesses from Kunshan City is an undisputed reality. The primary reason for these enterprises seeking alternatives has been the geopolitical tussle between China and the U.S., which spurred a shift in supply chains and a move to mitigate risks. Suzhou local Qian Yu stated that the high tax imposition by the Chinese government and geopolitical influences are also contributing factors to this withdrawal. He said, "It's not just Taiwanese companies; even Korean firms and other foreign enterprises have left. Workers in the factories complained about the high taxes here, which stifle business growth. Many companies are looking to expand in Vietnam instead." Qian further noted, "Kunshan is very close to Shanghai, acting like its backyard. Some businesses that couldn't register in Shanghai chose to do so in Kunshan, hence the high concentration of foreign enterprises. But the exodus of foreign capital started last year. Now even the young labor force struggles to find jobs. Not everyone can shift to delivery services. Who would be placing orders anyways?" Discussing the impact of this shift on Suzhou, Qian highlighted that it has been quite significant, with property prices beginning to plummet. There are no people. Kunshan is swiftly turning into a ghost town. When homeowner shares that in 2017 he bought a 1.2 million yuan apartment in Kunshan for his parents, but given the recent dip in property prices, he decided to sell it. Only to be told by real estate agents that it's now worth just 500,000 yuan. If he sells at this price, not only will he lose the down payment, but he'll also be at a financial loss. Not only are property prices in Kunshan experiencing a sharp decline, but workers are witnessing a reduction in wages and also facing difficulties securing jobs. Due to contract manufacturers assembling key components in Kunshan, salaries here were once 30% higher than in inland provinces. However, the current scenario in Kunshan is grim, with companies downsizing and slashing wages and benefits, leaving many homeless as they cannot find employment. Today, I visited Kunshan and particularly the famous Kunshan Chenghua Park. Anyone who has worked in the electronics factories here surely knows this place. Recently, I came across online posts about the hard times this year, how jobs are hard to come by, leaving many people jobless and penniless. Consequently, some are forced to sleep in the park, unable to afford even a 30 yuan per night hostel. I didn't expect to witness quite a number of young individuals bedding down in the open with their belongings and blankets. It's beyond my imagination seeing this firsthand. The overall economic downturn in China this year makes job hunting a nightmare. It seems these folks couldn't find employment for a long time, which led to them seeking shelter in the park. Recently, Kunshan is witnessing a trend where many Taiwanese businesses are pulling out of the area. I live in a place close to Shanghai called Huakao, separated from Shanghai by just a river. Let's take a stroll in areas where there's a high concentration of Taiwanese companies. Kunshan holds the title of the highest GDP among county-level cities in China, an achievement powered by a large number of companies, including numerous foreign enterprises. Among these, Taiwanese companies form a significant portion. However, in recent months, due to various reasons, some of these companies have started leaving Kunshan, resulting in an oversupply of labor. The scenario has flipped from factories struggling to find workers to now having an abundance of workers but no factories hiring. The current situation in Suzhou is utterly abnormal. Usually, around this time of the year, factories would be massively recruiting, even welcoming older workers. But this year, many factories aren't hiring, especially the large ones that employ tens of thousands. For those grappling with car and home loans, this year is incredibly tough. Many of my friends work in factories, and some run job agencies. From what I've gathered, no industry is having a good year compared to the past. Many factories are not offering overtime, and the wages have plummeted even lower than what they were a decade ago. The hiring freeze in factories has forced many job agencies to shut their doors. According to the Financial Times, factory owners and logistics groups in Kunshan mentioned that they are cutting expenses to deal with the decrease in exports. Several recruitment personnel revealed that the number of factory workers has diminished, with hourly wages being reduced by up to a third, and substantial signing bonuses being abolished. Due to a reduction in orders, the labor market has become more competitive, and many factories have started rejecting older job applicants. 
This trend has reversed the trend of increasing recruitment to meet high demand in the early stages following the pandemic control. A recruitment intermediary told the Economic Observer that many factories in Suzhou and Kunshan have reached a saturation point regarding labor force. Factories that used to hire two to 300 people daily a couple of years ago are now only recruiting 20 to 50 individuals daily. Mr. Chen, head of a labor service company in Kunshan, remarked, As of now, factories here are not hiring temporarily. They are at full capacity and the efficiency isn't great either. No other opportunities are available currently. There are no jobs. Since the performance within the factories is not up to the mark, they don't require that many workers, hence the lack of recruitment. It's not just us, this is the case everywhere. After a decline in factory shipments, associated logistics operators are also facing a tough time. James Gao, the owner of a logistics group in Kunshan working with Foxconn and another Taiwanese company, Pecatron Corporation, noted that the shipment volumes in the first quarter of 2023 has decreased by at least a third, compared to the same period last year. Gao stated, Our drivers used to find it difficult to find parking spots at the Shanghai port. Now, half the parking lot is empty. Gao added that some of his clients, Taiwanese factories primarily serving Western consumer electronic brands, have started diverting some of their orders to factories in Vietnam and India, propelled by geopolitical tensions to adopt a diversified approach. Moreover, due to the challenging business environment in mainline China, the number of Taiwanese people stranded there grappling with business failures or health issues, is increasing daily. As reported by the Central News Agency, the Taiwan Strait Exchange Foundation stated on August 31st that the number of cases involving Taiwanese individuals stranded in the mainland from 2019 to July of this year has accumulated to 316, and is increasing annually. The Deputy Secretary General of the Taiwan Strait Exchange Foundation, Tsai Mingjun, underscored a concerning trend among many individuals who relocated to the mainland in past years. She pointed out that a significant portion of these individuals have not sustained familial connections, thereby failing in their duty to support their families. As a consequence, a large number of senior citizens are enduring health issues or financial strains in their advanced years, with no backing from family members who seem either reluctant or incapable of extending help. This has left many destitute and forced to take up non-standard jobs. The majority of cases handled by the foundation involve elderly individuals who are ill and unable to take care of themselves. Tsai Mingjun also cautioned the Taiwanese public to carefully assess the risks before going to the mainland, due to significant legal differences between the two regions. Recently, a video from Radio Free Asia went viral in the Chinese-speaking community. Taiwanese businessperson Li Mingju was sentenced for espionage in 2019 in mainland China. After more than four years, Li Mingju finally returned to Taiwan on September 2nd, as soon as he stepped into the airport terminal, he couldn't resist kissing the ground twice, symbolizing his newfound freedom. Li Mingju was accused of being a Taiwanese spy in 2019, implicated in the anti-extradition protests in Hong Kong. Arrested in October of the same year for alleged espionage and unlawfully providing state secrets, he served a sentence of one year and ten months with an additional two years of deprivation of political rights. He was only allowed to leave the mainland on the condition that he would not return to Taiwan before the presidential election. Consequently, he went to Tokyo first and did not arrive at Taipei Songshan Airport until the afternoon of September 1st. After 1,475 days, he stepped on his homeland soil, expressing in an interview at the airport that the experience was surreal and he kissed the free land to remind everyone to pay more attention to their personal safety. Li Mingju lamented that taking a few unauthorized military pictures had interrupted his life and work for four years. When asked if he would dare to go to China again, he said he wouldn't consider it unless there were significant changes in China. 
Using his own experience as a warning, he remarked, "Freedom is like air. Only when suffocated do people realize its preciousness and cherish it." It's worth mentioning that, besides being unjustly labeled as a Taiwanese spy, Li Mingju also appeared on CCTV for a forced confession. He mentioned that he was deceived into recording a critical video meant for the Beijing leaders, which would determine the length of his sentence. Dissatisfied with his statements, two national security officers continuously demanded retakes, resulting in eight or nine recordings before they left satisfied. Inside the prison, inmates were required to watch the CCTV news broadcast at seven o'clock every day. Ironically, during one week when the television malfunctioned, was the time his forced confession video was aired on CCTV. In fact, with China's current economic slowdown and widespread industry decline, not only Taiwanese businesses but also numerous American enterprises, especially those involved in high-tech sectors, are accelerating the withdrawal from China. Siemens chief human resources officer Judas Weiss mentioned that the company is in the process of recruiting staff and contemplating setting up factories in countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, and Thailand. Taiwanese economist Wu Jialong candidly stated, "Now it's not just foreign investments withdrawing; it seems China's own enterprises may have to move abroad to conduct exports, unable to continue operations within China. Hence, currently, due to the relocation of manufacturing bases, the initial decline of the role of the world's factory naturally led to job losses and unemployment issues straight away." Sony has already moved its smartphone factory from Beijing to Thailand. Apple is relocating eight contract factories from China to India. Samsung has shut down several factories manufacturing phones, computers, and TVs in China, opting for Vietnam instead. In the footwear and clothing industry, international brands like Nike, Uniqlo, and Muji have taken the lead. Shifting their contract factories to Cambodia, Vietnam, and Bangladesh, among others. The decline of Kunshan reflects the impending end of China's era as the world's factory.